Gentlemen, welcome back to another Q&A. Uh, I got a question from a viewer named Brian who asks, uh, I am at a data center. I'm supposed to be testing uh, 700, 800 foot runs of overhead bus duct, 600 volt bus duct. Uh, how do I do that? My test leads, the longest test leads I have are 100 feet. Okay, so that is actually a really good question and I, I think at some point in my life I trained people on how to do this the hardest way possible. Um, there's a much easier way than uh, many would have you believe. It's it's really not that difficult to test super long bus duct. Um, so number one, there's really two things that we have to do to test overhead busway. Uh, number one, open up everything. Uh, you have to perform a, a mega test, an insulation resistance test. Um, I'll throw up a picture of what the stuff actually looks like. So you can see how important it is to make sure that the insulation resistance is really good. A lot of times, especially on the 600 volt or the 250 volt bus duct, the insulation is extremely, extremely thin. So you got to make sure that that is not damaged in any way when they're installing it. Uh, it happens a lot that this stuff fails getting installed. Um, the number one note about the mega test, I'm going to get to the <laughs> Brian's actual question in a second. The number one note about that is your results have to be converted to thousand foot runs. So we use this formula, uh, resistance per thousand feet, because if we're comparing our resistance values to need a table 100.1, we actually want to get usable results. It's going to depend on the length of the bus duct itself, right? Because a longer bus duct has more stuff, more insulation, more joints and things like that. So we need to have a, a standardized sort of measurement unit that we can use to compare it to pass fail values or similar pieces of bus duct that might be shorter. So we use this uh, R1000 foot correction, right, to get to our R measured. So this is what we're actually getting from our mega test set. If it's 600 volt bus, we're going to hit it at a thousand volts. And this is the resistance value that we actually get from our, uh, from our test set. And we're going to multiply that by the length, if I can spell, over a thousand. So if I have a 250 foot piece of bus duct, my measured value, my R measured, would be times 250 over a thousand. So we're essentially dividing our measured value by a quarter. If it was a 4,000 foot piece of bus duct, you divide it number by four to get your thousand foot measurement. Okay, I think we beat that horse to death. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't need a lot of explanation. The, the real question is how do we ductor really, really long pieces of bus duct or metal enclosed busway, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm just going to draw this real quick. So, we And usually in a data center or some sort of large industrial site, this is one end is going to be a lot easier uh, to access. It's going to be connected to a breaker. It's going to be connected to a switch gear, something like that, where you can actually see the stub ends of that. And that's generally where I recommend hooking up the test set. On the far end, you need to short them. So this is going to be the same procedure, whether it's three phase, three wire bus or three phase, four wire with a neutral, or, you know, it has a neutral and ground. Sometimes you'll see that, but, uh, the procedure works the same either way. And I'll show you on a three phase, three wire system. So this is a phase, B phase and C phase bus that are some, I don't know, some known length, right? Well, we'll say it's 500 feet. It doesn't really matter right now. What we do know is that the bus is longer than the test leads that we have, and that's a problem because ideally, normally, what you would do is you just hook your test leads up uh, on one end and you hook them up on the other end and you'll be able to test across the bus. It's great. It's the easiest way to do it. Except uh, when it's really long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to short one end of them together. And there's a couple different ways that we can do that, especially in data centers uh, because the the busways, the, the bus ducts themselves are kind of enclosed and they're kind of hard to get to. Uh, one thing that I like to do, and I'll probably post a picture of it up, is you're going to take a tap box. It's got a breaker in it. Borrow that from the EC, borrow it from the customer when you guys are doing commissioning. Uh, take the breaker out and then just put jumper cables in to jumper the buses together so you've got a movable thing that you can slide in and out of each uh, bus duct end that you're going to be working on. It's a really easy way to do it. 
highly recommend. Take a quick step back and explain something really quick. How does a ductor work? I think we, we sort of take this for granted. We think we understand, but a lot of people don't have that sort of uh, intuition. So I'm just going to explain it real quick, as easy as I can, right? You've got your test set. This is a DLRO. I've got four leads that come out of that DLRO. I've got I1. Drawn it kind of weird just because I'm going to connect to them later. I2, which I've got 100 amps or whatever. If you're doing bus duct, I'd recommend you use a 100 amp or a 200 amp DLRO. Definitely wouldn't recommend you use a 10 amp ductor. just doesn't have enough, enough ass to get a real... Uh, it doesn't have enough VA to push hard enough to get a real accurate reading, and sometimes you won't get any reading at all. So I would definitely recommend using a 100 or 200 amp DLRO at a minimum to do this. You want to hit it as hot as you can uh, to get the best measurement. So I1 to I2 is going to deliver, let's just say 100 amps to keep the math easy. And then I'm going to have two more leads. There's four leads total. I've got P1 and I've got P2. And so what actually happens inside the DLRO is it pushes current from I1 to I2, and then it takes a, a voltage measurement between P1 and P2. So because we know from Ohm's law that uh, resistance equals V over I, I think that's right, we can uh, take these two measurements we have the we we know that our DLRO is pushing out 100 amps and then I take this uh, voltage measurement between P1 and P2 and I can just straight up divide that and I get the resistance between any two points well that's great and that's why we have four leads on our test set uh, especially on those bigger ones you can tell you've got your current leads and they're substantially thicker than your voltage sensing leads and that that potential difference between those two smaller voltage sensing leads is our measurement well we can do some really cool things because we've got four terminals on that test set let's say for instance i want to take uh the measurement of the c phase bus it just works out with the way that i drew it um, so we're going to connect I1 to C phase, and then I2, I want you to hook that to A phase, B phase, it doesn't really matter which one you do, as long as we follow along on the next step. So we've got, at this point, I've got 100 amps flowing all the way through from the C phase bus to the A phase bus. Now what I want to do is I want to take P1, as you would test pretty much anything else, and we're going to connect that here on the close end of the C phase bus. And we're going to take P2 and we're going to connect that to B phase. Now I'm going to prove to you why this is going to work. It's actually really, really cool. Um, let's say, for example, this is just an example. Again, we're, we're trying to solve for the resistance from one end of the C phase bus to the other. That's, that's what we're doing. Let's say, for example, I've got 0.1 ohms across the entire length of our C phase bus. That's great. So we're going to have, just assume for a second we've got 0.1 ohms on all three of these, right? Well, I know, again, from Ohm's law and the way that the DLRO works, that I've got this substantial amount of current flowing from I1 to I2. So it's going through the C phase bus and returning back uh, to me on the A phase bus. The voltage that we're reading is essentially just the voltage drop caused by that current, the voltage drop that we're measuring across any two, any two points. So if I say my C phase bus is 0.1 ohms, so our voltage drop, if I've got 100 amps going through the C phase bus, uh, let's say that my voltage drop, which we'll call VDC, uh, voltage drop of the C phase bus equals 100 amps times 0.1 ohms, or whatever. Again, that's the, the value that we're solving for. I just want to sort of explain how this whole thing is going to shake out. So our VDC is going to equal about 10 volts. So that's a, a pretty substantial amount of voltage, right? So 10 volts here. And then our A phase bus, again, we've got the same current. We've got a similar amount of resistance. It's going to be 10 volts on our A phase bus as well. Now, our B phase bus, are we going to have 10 volts dropping across the B phase bus as well? Well, probably not. 
right? Because the amount of current that's actually going to flow into our, our P2 terminal is really, really low. In this case, it's probably going to be about uh, one microamp. It's a very, very sensitive piece of test equipment. It's going to have very low uh, amount of current coming in to get a, a reasonable voltage measurement, right? So our VD of B phase is going to be one microamp times 0.1 ohms, which is some obscenely small, it's like whatever that, a 0.1 microamp, you know, 100 nanoamps, some incredibly small amount of voltage drop that we're getting here. So we're getting this uh, very, very low voltage drop here, comparatively extremely low to our C phase bus. What this means is on a three phase installation of bus duct, whether it's again, I've got ABC or ABC in neutral or ABC neutral and ground or however it's configured, as long as I've got three or more phases in the bus duct that are relatively the same and can carry the same relative amount of current, I can use the other phases as part of my test lead. So the only caveat, the only thing I really need to watch out for here is that on this end, on my far end, I, well, number one, whatever I'm using to connect the phases together is rated for the, the test current. If I'm using a 100 amp test set, I really need to have large jumpers on the other end. Uh, and the resistances here need to be fairly low because if, if one of those is off, it's going to throw off your other readings. But assuming we can control for that, which is, is not that difficult in the field, I can use the other two phases as my test leads and it comes out perfectly accurate. So when I do this, if I've got P1 and P2 here, that's the phase that I'm measuring. As long as I've got the other two split between the other two phases, I'm going to get a very, very accurate result for my DLRO reading on C phase, the one under test. All right, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes uh, the next time you go test bus duct easier for you because I it's it's so much easier <laughs> than uh, the contrived way that I've done it in the past. This is, it's so much easier and it's actually probably more accurate than whatever else you're doing in the field trying to get super long leads strung out across the floor. So uh, again, I hope that helps. Thanks for joining me for another Q&A and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.